what if you use AI to shut down your all electrical connections of the city? My gate, no broker yeah. road, whatever. Like you know, yeah. these apps are all there, and they track everyone who has visited your home. Hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. They track every person who has exited. It could be your freaking relative, your closest brother, friend, whatever. If I come to your home, I have to enter a pin code with my name and mobile, hmm. and that data goes into a database. Right? We still pay for it and everything, but. it still goes into a database mm-hmm. they know everyone who is at your home right now they literally know that and when you think about that that nobody is nobody is even thinking like my first reaction when no broker and market i was like i don't want to tell who is at my home i don't want to tell how many amazon deliveries i'm getting mm-hmm. now the whole idea is that they are selling this data to advertisers we have become comfortable with it because we love the services right so mm-hmm. privacy is a myth and privacy is also a privilege is it better to become a vegetable vendor today because dude people are going to buy vegetables at the end of the day but there there is a high chance as you mentioned that quant or tech or ai will take over the task of being a fund manager today people who are not adding that x factor mm. will be ridden off right because you are looking at 12 13 factors right the machine can look at 200 factors on 200 shops in a minute mm. software engineering as a yeah. job is going to be there mm. it's not going to go away the mm-hmm. that job is going to be there mm. what is going to go away is the big packages that come up with it and the mediocre skill sets also because just you are from a good college will get hired at a high package is going to go away mm. right so when upskilling comes in you need to be a swiss knife okay like you know <laughs> you need to be a literally a swiss knife you need okay. to have six to seven tools that you are really good at Hmm. And if you're not good at, I am only saying, don't expect great salaries. Don't expect companies to pay you a lot if you don't have six, seven skill sets. Hello, listeners. Welcome back to Economically Yours. Uh, on today's episode, in a fresh tangent of going a little, uh, tweaking a little to what our conversations usually are, uh, and going uh, with respect to what's around the world, what's hot around the world. I have the AI guy with me today, uh, Akshat Bhayati. He's the project manager at the Adeco Group, and he. is also very active on social media and claims himself to be the ai guy which i think he is not only claims <laughs> and is also a dear friend from bangalore so welcome akshat uh, i'm delighted to host you today on economically yours same time yeah i think like uh, yeah it's like you know i always have been saying content but like yeah something that is like write something that i always wanted to because you know you know my dystopian views on the future mm-hmm. but it's also like it's super interesting like you know the kind of world we live in and we have always been discussing this like over our long talks so yeah it would be great to like you know just share some of that and like see how the world reacts yeah so i i'll i'll jump straight into the topic right i mean we 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 all, we all know what ai is what ml is like we've been studying that in our colleges and stuff like that but open ai is a new concept that's come into that that's created all the buzz since the last few quarter a, a one quarter or two so let's start with what is open ai well it's actually interesting right like because uh Elon Musk just gave a recording, like you know, he did give a first conversation with CNBC after the annual general meeting of Tesla, and OpenAI started with a very simple concept. It's a, it was a not-for-profit company to compete with Google in AI, right? That was their whole idea that you know you create an organization so that the power is not concentrated in one place. It's not mm-hmm. concentrated with Google or the Apples or the Microsofts of the world. It started as a not-for-profit. right it got donations from people so when open ai like you know when people say that you know we helped create open ai and you know everyone like you know then why don't you control it well it's because it was not for profit and all of these people just donated the money literally just donations right so what happened with that now you have a company which created some of the you can say like the first good open source models right now there are a lot of them but like you know there are some good open source models now again i won't go in technically but you know very simply like you know open sourcing why it helps for ai or any companies because every engineer or every researcher out there can use that and can build their own better models right that was the whole logic behind open ai that you distribute the power now what happened now okay let's come to the last 6 months in the last 6 months it's not it's not a company which was working for not for profit it's not something that they are just charging us those 20 dollars for gpt4 to you know help other people they're yeah. charging that to become a for profit company they have turned themselves into a for profit company and companies have invested in them it's mm-hmm. infosys it's microsoft all of them have invested it's it's not that not for profit the gpt4 model nobody knows what has gone into it after gpt3 they stop publishing their models in its self completely open source yeah. there are research papers there is detail now it's a company which today has yes put that black swan event happened when chat gpt got released and it was like yeah this is the simplest way to access in ai and it got crazy 
the idea is it was supposed to be open source it's not and that is both scary and great at the same time because yes there will be other companies who will be doing the same the scary part is yes because they have so much more in the economy right now like i don't think we have been using google bard in the same way that we have used strategy right like yeah. my still go to tool is strategy just because of the way that it has been constructed yeah. right so now you actually have like you know having google as one search engine is still okay right because you're just getting the right information again there are a lot of problems with that also but like you know they're just putting in information have, having one go to default ai agent it's difficult because the point is that everyone will have the same opinion right like if tomorrow i go and tweak the algorithm in such a way that you know i search about let's say the next elections in india and everyone says like you know it's the majority that's going to win mm. and everyone searches the same thing it's you can tweak it to literally say you know what no it's this different p- political party that wins and then we are off to the races that anything can change that's why having one specific ai agent that we all rely on and we all love is super crazy because it can actually disseminate information which is completely generated as you want it and you will not even know that you are being fooled or manipulated that's why it's a big problem like when you when people yeah. compare google and chat gpt a lot like you know i also like you know put a post like you know why search is dead but there is a huge difficulty in like if search is dead and compared to what happens here so yeah. so okay mentioning talking about disseminating information now i was uh, you know i told you remember the podcast that i recently watched with varun and tanmay bhat yeah. that analogy that they shared so there is a lot of information millions and billions of zillions of pages across the internet and you're telling me that if if these ai chat gpt or bard or the likes of it they are running on information that's already stored on the internet is it not possible that there are nuclear codes on at least one or the other pages and these are ai platforms that are yeah. built to encrypt those things right so how is it how is this not scary it is like i don't i don't think uh, we are saying that it's not like, but the point is like okay so very simply first of all let's say like at the nuclear part of it, right like again i think that that's still like very i will say that's the least use case anyone will use ai for because again you need the whole physical infrastructure and everything and all of that right you still need to plug in the nuclear codes just imagine leave that okay what if you use ai to shut down your all electrical connections of the city okay yeah. leave like let's let's leave like the whole part of nuclear obviously nuclear weapons are a huge problem and you can destroy it right yeah. but today you are not using them because it's a nuclear deterrent right someone fires and it's a huge problem but what if i shut down the whole city's electricity for 5 days mm. right that's a much more scarier thought right yeah. and yes and that's where that's where you come in like you know technically you can ask chat gpt to do anything they are putting in the safeguards that you know you can't write a prompt i'll tell you okay the biggest hack you want chat gpt to do anything and it's saying you know i can't do this just mm. write one word educational purposes that's it i'm just doing it for and it will actually respond and you know the more you can go on reddit and search for a lot of prompts and like you know you can create your own that's called do anything now prompts it's okay you just write educational purposes you don't even need to do that much, right so yes the more scary part chavi is yes you you what what will you have you will have a fire attack being crafted by a 12th grade student or a 10th grade student or anyone and they can take cities down mm. by just literally utilizing that right now again so your so there are like you know two conflicts to that obviously ai in you know as any internet technology it's a sword right it's a sword with two edges you can use it to plug in but the idea is like you know what do we do right if you look at like you know it is super scary and like you know i think if you look at it someone we need much better technology now we need yeah. super better technology compared to like what before from a security standpoint right and like you know once we come to the parts where we are looking at jobs like this is going to be something that companies need to we need to have physical infrastructure that protects like you know they need there need to be some level of physical keys everyone is like you no know, it should all be digital you have those passwords you have those cracking open movie scenes that we have seen you know just you yeah. need physical infrastructure now to protect that like you know you can't take down the electricity grid by just writing some code you need someone to switch on and turn on those things yeah, right. because in today's world that's the only level of security that you can have right mm-hmm. like someone yeah and then obviously that someone can come and break in kill everyone and like someone who wants to do can do but just imagine someone randomly experimenting can't take your grid down which is now possible because you will have like a sophisticated level of knowledge required to take down a city right and then you will be if you are looking at hackers and stuff they won't do that because there is too much risk right but just imagine you are creating something okay you are trying to maybe like you know take down one cctv of your own apartment or one traffic light in front of your house and you are just experimenting as a kid exploring it and you just say you know how to take down all the traffic lights near my area and 
for some reason 110% charge gpt is 110% capable of this if you like you know prompt it enough after some time you just have a whole script that takes down the whole thing that takes the information and thing obviously it won't be someone who's like you know will have certain knowledge of like you know technical expertise but like if like you know me my friends and we have to sit down and do it together i'm pretty sure in a month's time without even upskilling ourselves a lot we'll be able to like you know create some kind of like that that can take down a lot of things right it's just that specific point yes and it is scary to the part that what if you switch off water supplies what if you switch off those things right and then you i think now physical infrastructure is going to be so much more at priority of vulnerability of attacks and i think india is still lower than that because we are not so digital mm. right i don't think that's going to be a bad thing now at least in infrastructure <laughs> right because we have seen how us cities are like how, what's happening in ukraine right now they have switched mm. off like literally like yeah. they just have a cyber warfare cyber warfare is going to get easier and also there may be just mistakes like you know someone by mistake did mm-hmm. something just because they were trying something out it's it, it could be yeah so it's it's scary but mm-hmm. i think like that's that's also a beautiful part right like you have a technology that can do so much right and again it's like everything is scary part right like everything has a scary part but then also you know the good always overpowers the evil right yeah. let's see until machines take over we'll probably be like you know relying on humans so yeah Okay. talking about machines taking over and us being humans how far are we till we turn ourselves into machines like how far are we from that kind of situation where technology becomes where we become a part of technology than not technology becoming a part of ourselves i think i think not very far right like you if you look at it like you know and then again i would like to like you know ponder upon this question when we say how far are we okay so when we say like you know technology till now like you know we are highly re- reliant on it, right we are literally recording this podcast on a laptop right yeah. we are highly reliant on it but it's for the first time that machines can come and say you know what i can do everything that you already do but i can do it better and faster right that's for the first time so we are not very far like if you look at what human is doing right it's a, it's a yeah. great ai company and like you know they are very uh ensuring to make a very safe air now the idea if you look at it what their idea is yes, yeah. if you could dive deep for my listeners yeah, yeah. so what human does right like they are a personal ai agent okay so when i say personal ai agent i'm not talking about chat gpt or something or like imagine charvi like you have an assistant right and now that assistant has been with you for 10 years okay imagine that and that assistant knows your food habits knows your calendars knows your families knows when someone's birthday is knows your medical requirements whatever they are hopefully never have but whatever it is whatever it is about you that assistant which some of the highest executives in the world today have they have an extension of their own which runs a lot of things for them right just look at it at that simple example human is trying to give that to anyone so you just input everything and again the technology is still in development so there is not like how the interface would be but you have everything about you put into a gpt like a thing like you know it tells you okay you know what charmi i have recorded your calories i have booked your calendars and i have booked your meetings right now the point is you can already do that you like actually how is that different? the idea is it is going to actually talk to you as an assistant it's not going to tell you okay charmi because of this like you know you have this xyz thing that's why you have to go to this guy. no they like this is the calendar right this is how we have arranged your calendar and it's based on the rules and instructions and your preferences right but as a human assistant it evolves so you say no i'm i'm too dumb i can't have six meetings in a day right the next auto meetings will be auto scheduled based on your priority automatically mm. so let's say you are a ceo of some company you have 15 meetings in a day you are burnt out by the end of three days now it has a tracker to track your glucose levels your body levels and everything right and we already have that it just inputs that information says okay you know what this person can't work at 80% or 90% productivity right now let's cut down some meetings and it automatically starts taking those decisions on you obviously you will have some control until a point and then you say you know what okay and then your productivity increases by 10x folds yes which is harnessed by someone who has literally every information that you have and also information that you are not tracking right because you may sleep 5 hours a day and you are like okay it's fine i'll i'll go through the day right but your body markers are saying you know what no this person not performing at its optimum productivity that's what human is trying to do right like it's going to have a uh, literally a uh, agent that's connected to your body mm. and has every information on you and wants to help you do whatever you want to best right and and that's why so it is going to be integrated and like i think like if you look at what neuralink is trying to do right it's yeah. not far away that we have literally a machine implanted in us i don't know where brain mm. it's it could be right there in the nervous system in your hand or something or maybe like an assisted like a watch that every one of us wears it could be anything 
but it's not far away. I'll, I'll say maybe like, I'll give us, I think max a decade for the technology to get cheaper and be with everyone. And I'm talking with everyone. I'm talking from the richest of the person to be the, like the person who can't afford anything. Also, the government will give those trackers to track them. It could be, it, it, it is a dystopian future. Would you, would you sign up for Neuralink? Yeah, if, if I had the chance, to, I would be. I almost, I like, it, it would be crazy. Like, it would be risky, but I would love, I would love to see what it can be. So, yeah. See, but the, the point I asked you is that because growing up, I would say not even growing up, I'd say in the last few years only, we are, we are really very scared. Whenever we download an app also on the phone, there's an option that, you know, iOS gives to the ask app to track or not to allow app to track, yeah. basically. We don't even allow apps to track. And we know that despite all the encryption that these social media platforms claim that they are doing, they don't. Anytime yeah. our microphones are on, they know what we are speaking and they throw us at them. It's, it's true. Having said that, we, as humans, we are scared for that small minor thing. But today, as we extrapolate something like a Neuralink or a human, what, what that particular technology is doing, how comfortable would we be adapting to that, adapting to the fact that our data is publicly available in such scalable measures? So, okay, then let's look at it right like, now. Leave everything. Okay, let's leave our apps. I think look at the society management apps that have come in. Hmm. Like, that have come in in the last four or five years, right? Like MyGate and stuff. MyGate, No Broker, yeah. Mode, whatever. Like, you know, yeah. These apps are all there and they track everyone who has visited your home. Hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. They track every person who has exited. It could be your freaking relative, your closest brother, friend, whatever. If I come to your home, I have to enter a PIN code with my name and mobile. Right? Hmm. And that data goes into a database, right? We still pay for it and everything, but it still goes into a database. Mm -hmm. They know everyone who's at your home right now. They literally know that. And when you think about that, that's, nobody's, nobody's even thinking. Like my first reaction when no broker and my kid, I was like, I don't want to tell who is at my home. I don't want to tell how many Amazon deliveries I'm getting. Mm -hmm. Now, the whole idea is that they're selling this data to advertisers, mm -hmm. right? They're already selling, okay, you know what? This, so if you're in living in the upper class, neighborhood or like you know us township good township you know. township you already know okay these piece orders more from swiggy compared to zomato so swiggy just don't target your ads here zomato maybe right and we're already giving that it just imagine your literal home leave internet yeah you're literally using that to have someone whoever is in your home is yeah. right and i think we have become human like we have become comfortable with it because we love the services, right? So mm -hmm. privacy is a myth and privacy is also a privilege. So if you are charged, yeah. if you are an extremely rich person, you buy the whole township out, right? That's what like, you know, Zuckerberg and all 30, yeah. the next 30 homes next to his home is all bought out by him, right? Mm -hmm. So privacy will become a super privilege. And and yes, like there is no two ways about it. We already are tracked, like your Aadhaar tracks everything about you, yeah. right? Yeah. Your phones are tracking you on a daily basis. No matter what, if you're traveling right now, you switch on Google Maps, it's done. They they have everything that you do. I literally have a timeline in my Google Maps that like you know I have because I have location done on someone. It shows everywhere I have went, and it also asks me, can you verify which place do you went in here, and can you upload a receipt? Yeah, I'll give you some yeah, money. Yeah, right? yeah. And that's already happening, and we are just okay with that because the point is, the services that have made our life comfortable are obviously being like you know it's a, it's a simple and analogy that goes back to if you are not paying for it, you are the product, right? And I would love to pay yeah. for a paid Google product, right? But the point is Google will never put that because it's so much more cheaper to just have my data and so much more money they can make on my data compared to like, you know, making me pay. Like if you look at YouTube premium, 180, 90 bucks for yeah, six people. Six people. Super cheap, right? And I love that because again, it's still, but they are not saying that they are not tracking their data. They are just showing, we are not showing you the ads for that. Yeah. Right? We have never mentioned that, you know, I'm not going to track. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. This is saying that we will not show you ads. That's all. So they, the data, I think we have already let let go of our data to a large extent. And I like, like you know, and given the, like, you know, the idea about social media and everything, right? Like, you know, everyone needs to have a content part and everything. And we, like, are, like, I don't think we are even included in that. We literally share our thoughts and everything. Maybe some parts of our life is still private, right? And like, you know, we like to keep that way. And probably there would be some, some regulations. I think, you know, or like some other nation will come back to us. Even in India, we... But I don't think you'll ever have, like, until unless you're super rich and or like super powerful, like a prime minister present, your data will never be like, you know, it's only with these 10 people. It, it's already but then What about products? Like, say, for instance, for all my personal non-work related stuff, I use Brave browser rather than yeah. using Google Chrome or Safari. 
Yeah. Brave claims to, you know, not track my data, to not show me ads, to have, to allow me to have a, a non-disturbed version kind of a browsing yeah. experience. So when I say that I'm using Brave and I am doing that with the satisfaction that, you know, my data is not being tracked and I'm not being disturbed while I'm scrolling through stuff. How is that? Where, where am I the product? When I'm what do you use on Brave? I scroll through all, I scroll through my personal stuff like no, what is, so mails, Gmail, Google, mails, LinkedIn, right. etc. Yeah. Right. So let's say you log in into Google, right? And then if you log in, sign in with Google anywhere, hmm. right? It logs in automatically, even in the Brave browser, Correct. right? It's a, because it's based on Chrome, right? Correct. How do you think that's happening? Right. The point is, it already it has it may like so session. I I don't know the exact technicalities of Brave, but maybe you end the session and then they clear the queries, but it's still tracked. Right, and when you go to google.com or if you have even searched maps.google.com, they have already taken your location. Mm. Right, they are putting that in the database. The only thing it's saying is they are not going to track your journeys, right? That's allowed in Chrome, right? Now, maybe that's all they are not tracking your journeys. Mm. But whatever you're doing, channel, right? Like every time you log in, right? The only way that you probably can't be tracked right now, as like you know, not being not spending shitload of money, mm. is as some email extensions are there, right? Maybe yeah. use Proton Mail, right. And again, it's a great service. It's free of cost for five GBs, right? And they are building a suite of services. And I think that's one of the places, you know, where you'll have like, okay, yeah, a peace of mind, right? But the problem is not everyone allows sign in with Proton, right? Okay. As then you're going in and signing in with the email and everything, right? Mm -hmm. So if you like, you know, you can use still some services, right? But would you not check out your Instagram? Would you not check out your LinkedIn? This big tech that is already there, right? They're tracking you. Right. They're literally tracking you. Like if I ask ChatGPT to create a web scraper for any other website, it will do. Whenever I ask it for LinkedIn, it will not allow. And then I have to go and do that because it's a Microsoft company. I can, okay, I can understand uh, using AI for a lot of things like maybe generating captions, generating newsletters, blogs, and stuff like that, or maybe even for programmers to code some so to code certain things. So I yeah. two things. I want to dissect this into two aspects now. A uh, is it see i personally do not believe that ai will take over a lot of jobs and people will be unemployed by a, a huge number that is not something i believe because we've experienced disruptions in the past as well and employment has only increased over the years uh, yeah. i want to know your take on that and second uh, uh, there are some professions where i feel that ai cannot take over For instance uh, being a doctor being a pilot you know i i, I don't know if i will trust a robot to assess my body and tell me that you know you should get this surgery done or you should get this operation done or you should take these medicines and even if i you know if the robot suggests me that when i'm in, when i'm on in the icu I, I will not want a machine to operate me only i'm not saying that i you know really want only uh, people around me of course they'll be leveraging machines to do that better tech to do that yeah. but i don't think i'll be comfortable being alone on my hospital bed and just having a machine entirely operate on me by itself Okay, so let's look at the first part. Like, I'll take yeah. the jobs part later because yeah. that will be a yeah. Let's look at the trust part, right? So, right now you send me an email, right? What are you trusting it to deliver it to me? You're trusting technology, right? Why don't you trust a postman? Because it's slow, right? And plus, it will cost you a lot more if you are doing this in a studio room in everything, right? So, two things, right? So, it's it's trust is uh, you, you allow things to be non-trusted if it's cheap and if it's been proven, right? So if it's not costing you, right, it's proven, right? It's proven email will get delivered. You know, a Gmail will deliver, right? right. And second, uh, you are saying from a standard, it's cheaper, right? Now let's look at your analogy of doctor, right? Now, if you go to a general practitioner, like a person who is like, you know, your family doctor, and he'll, he'll know your symptoms and everything, right? What do doctors do? And like, again, this is not in any way to disregard what doctors do, but I'm just like trying to break down what their like, you know, specific job yeah. is. Right? And I put this in my newsletter also. And like, you know, like very simply, what does a doctor do? It will ask you what your symptoms are. Right? Yeah. It will ask you how you're feeling. And then they'll do a couple more diagnoses. Right? Yeah, right. And then based on that diagnosis and based on how they know you, your body, and like, you know, if they know you for... I've, I haven't had a family doctor for a long time. I just go to like, you know, the next doctor that is available, right? My okay. father and all they do, Strange. right? Yeah, like, so my father and all they do because they trust that one specific person. I'm like, it's again, and I have always, touch wood, I've always been in a great state even after this because mm -hmm. most of them will recommend the same medicine. It's the same concatenation of the medicine until unless yeah. I have something very specific, right? And I've been cured very well. Now, if you look at it, if any doctor is in doubt, what will they ask you to do? Get that uh, blood test, okay. right? And a blood test that's done by machine, mm. right? And uh, like, you know, a 
you do that, right? And you test that. And then you bring those results, which even now the results are like, you know, self-explanatory. They tell you, okay, this is less, you know, right? It. And then based on that, they give you a certain mix. Now, what is it? It's a, like very simply, it's a process of elimination, okay? Mm -hmm. So this happened, this is not there. And then this is common. And Charu doesn't have anything specific. She just may have a high fever. I'll mm -hmm. like, you know, give her like a seven day bed rest, right? Mm -hmm. And second part, when you come to it, it's like, you know, you trust things which are cheap. Uh, you trust things if they are cheap and if they are reliable, right? So your doctors are reliable, that's why you trust them, right? Yeah. I trust doctors because anyone, because I know that they have done their medicine work. Mm -hmm. When you are saying specifically that you will not be happy with a doctor operating you with you, okay? Now let's bring in two things. There have been cases of medical negligence, which yeah. are not really sometimes negligence, it just implies doctor didn't realize it, right? And there was a study done. New doctors, fresh graduates, are better at diagnosing disease compared to old doctors. Right, and it, it, it's I, I'll probably it's a very good Ivy League university study, and like I, I'll, we can put that in reference. The idea was a fresh, a new doctor is better at diagnosing because they've just studied about all the diseases. Like literally, like you know, he, he that guy has gone through some twenty exams to pass that, right? Mm -hmm. An old doctor has probably forgotten about them, not because he doesn't know about them, just he has forgotten is that he's like this may not happen, right? Mm -hmm. And the point is when you see that, right? You would just trust a freaking machine more because the point is. A machine doesn't put, oh, I don't remember this. Mm. Getting it. And this is actually like, you know, Charm, like this has been my family, like, you know, my uh, close relative went to a doctor and he said, like, you know, I'm not feeling well. The doctor checked him and he's like, no, it, like, you know, I feel, everything's fine. You are probably just like, you know, having a anxiety or something. Just like, you know, stay. That person is no more after like, you know, a certain, like the same day, like after a couple of hours, right? Because not negligence, I'll say, again, just like, you know, he didn't realize maybe, you know, there is something, mm. but if you, if today's technology in like five, 10 years, he would have gone into a machine, scanned everything about his body, everything about mm. heartbeat, your particular, in like a five minute session and given you, you know, here is what is happening. He needs a, whatever, he needs an operation. He needs this medicine right now, right? You would just trust that more. Mm. You would just trust that more because the point is there is zero percentage or like there's a highly minute percentage of inaccuracy which is extremely high in humans, right? And then let's come to the second part, right? Let's go deeper into this. You can afford a doctor today. You can easily go and afford, we can go into any hospital and afford the best doctor that there is, right? You have the access to the financial instruments, a health insurance, and everything. What happens to the lowest strata of the society? They are stuck with people or doctors which are great, but may not have the bandwidth to explore each one of them in the same way that we would get the chance to, right? Okay. So technology will bring that great doctors will become, yeah, in short, no other word, cheaper, right? They'll become better accessible to everyone, right? If I can put those kind of machines in every government hospital, everyone gets the same kind of treatment. You have much less people who are dying. You have much less people. And your poor start of society will always trust a machine more because they're like, they have seen doctors who don't give a fuck about it. And they're like, you know, sorry, you probably it, but like who don't care about that, right? Mm -hmm. Who don't care that you know and and not because of any re reason for doctors but just there's so much influx right in a country like india there's so many people who are on the bottom side of the society who can't afford those services so you are only trusting and when you come to the pilot part right yeah pilots are safe for a long time right pilots are safe for a long time until we actually have 100 planes who have gone and like it's still run on autopilot right the only thing is you trust that there is someone sitting. You trust 99% of times we don't see the pilot. I, mean, I know that the plane I'm flying in is running on autopilot. I'm sure yeah, about that. But yeah. I'm still trusting that pilot who's just sitting there guiding things. Exactly. Right. So, but what will happen, right? Like, you know, here is specifically tell me, you are going to have autonomous cars. You are not asking for drivers now, right? You are not asking because of XYZ reason, because it's a high frequency commodity. You need to travel every day. And if you are not buying a car, you are probably renting an Uber and Ola. There is like all the problems with that, right? And second, because it's like an economical thing, you can just hire a driver, right? What happens, you will probably have domestic flights being run with one pilot. I'm not saying two pilots. So you run with one pilot. With, and like I'm saying, like a two-hour flight from Delhi to Mumbai doesn't need two pilots, right? And it's because it's already running on autopilot. What you have is like, in case the pilot sleeps or like, yeah, you know, yeah. anything. The, it's over. It's like, you know what? We'll just take over this stuff. Right, and it's already do, doing that. We just have that, you know. And if you think, like, you know, there was this whole uh, discussion between pilots that, you know, the new pilots are not learning actual good skills, right? The new pilots, they're just learning the landing and takeoff because that's the only part that they need to take care of. Is it? Okay. 
Yeah, and and we, I, this was a proper like I probably uh, old times of India. This episode is scaring me more than I'm learning about. <laughs> no, but but like, I, I get it. I get it. Yeah, but it's great, right? Like you have just landing and like you know just the takeoff part. After that, it's cruise control, right? Yeah. And then yes, you need your pilot. But just imagine, we just had like a train accident recently, right? Like three trains, yeah. That, that's super sad, right? Like just imagine. And trains don't run like they don't run like there's nobody. I don't know which track to go, right? It's just yeah. an auto. Like I need to change the track. And this was a massive, probably a massive mess up with in the investigation by people who were running the control centers, right? Okay. What if you had an additional layer of intelligence? And because you know people may be working 34 hour shift or 36 hour shifts, and they're tired, they just forgot or whatever happens. Let's see. But if you have a machine, which is like you know what? Oh my God, there's something going to happen. Let's just stop all of this, right? Let's just target these trains and stop them because a machine can run multiple decisions automatically, right? It is it can run and maybe like you know you need someone to take accountability. So you have that like you know chief control staff who is saying okay probability of X Y Z things and this is a major incident that pops up. That's the first thing that goes on the screen mm -hmm. because there's something that's run concurrently. We already do that, right? We already do that for our airplanes because they are an expensive commodity. We already see like you know there are so many people in the ATC. Controlling which is going down, which plane is going up, and everything. Right? That's why there's a few number of like you know accidents. One of the safest modes of travel because of that. So your trust will become much more on machines which are already reliant. You don't you don't question. Okay, I'm going to get a Zepto delivery or I'm going to get a Swiggy. You don't question that. You don't like how do I trust someone to get my groceries, right? Like people used to have this, right? Why will I trust someone to come to my home? And like you know, do my hair stuff or stuff like you know. Actually, I'll... getting groceries is economically feasible. Going wrong on delivering groceries is economically feasible to me. I am okay if I've already paid via my credit card on a Dunzo or on a Swiggy or whatever blanket order that I've paid. I've paid five hundred bucks for groceries, sauces, whatever. I'm okay if that you know is not delivered properly, but I don't think I am okay economically, practically, rationally when it comes to my life. That is what I've, I'm, I'm contemplating. Yeah. So again, you are not because the point is you have the privilege to do that, right? Chan? You can choose someone to like you know do that. A lot of are just land on systems, right? And that's what I'm saying. That's why, like, we are talking like I am not saying that tomorrow you will start having a plane, but in ten years you will have the cheapest flights run by machines. You will have the cheapest. Like right now, Google is running a free experiment in San Francisco for people to get on the cars because it's free, right? There is no need of a driver. Do you really think you will not sit in a car running on a highway without a driver in ten years, right? You are not debating that. You are like, yeah, that may happen, right? That's easily happening, possible. Yeah. Yeah. And you are talking, and there are much more driving incidents probable than an airplane yeah. going down the flight, right? Like literally, the percentages don't talk. So you are saying you will rely on an extremely dangerous road to have a robot driving, but you will not rely on the extremely safest path to have a robot driving. So because it's just like right now, it's like you know, it's like because you you can't say that right now, right? Like you you know, it's the same way that you had industrial revolution. No machines will never take over like you know this, right? No, like there won't what like the same horse and car analogy, right? No, I will always need a better horse. Like you know, there is just some firmness. Mm -hmm. Like men will say there is a. Like you know, real gentleman way of like you know getting down from a horse or whatever. Right? Mm -hmm. The idea is that you know you are just saying that right now because the point is, until you see the next format of technology, right, and you feel safer. I'm telling you, Charmi, you will just sit on a flight one day and you won't even care. And that may sound strange, but the point is, there would have been ten thousand flights that would have happened till now, right? Right now we're saying that. What about the first flight, right? The, yeah, the first flight will probably require everyone to have parachutes. Okay? Yeah. The hundred flight will require maybe fifty percent of people to have parachutes. The thousand flight, probably the air hostess and like you know some tube like format. And I'm pretty sure someone is already solving this, right? So parachutes, why they are not on the plane? It's too heavy. I'm pretty sure someone will solve that part also. That you know they are just cheaper parachutes. You just plug in and like you know. Mm -hmm. So by the ten thousand flight, it will be like yeah, we can run with one pilot, and after that it will be just a certain part. So yes, it's because again, planes are something that have been running on autopilot for years. Right, mm -hmm. and there still have been crashes. Right, people didn't figure out like you know there can be, but just imagine you still. So there is a technology they use a flight simulator, right? There's a specific name to that I'm forgetting that they run simulations on it to okay. check what can happen wrong, and I think it's an extremely complicated, heavy software, right? Mm -hmm. And those people when they like you know anything hits, just imagine a machine already been able to calculate based on the all events, all your bird migrations, all your extrapolations, and everything that can be possible. They have already calculated until unless there is a terrorist attack that they don't the machine doesn't know about. That also it is much more easier to pick up. Maybe it hears some internet chatter, puts it in some algorithm. Just having like an autonomous machine again, and this is like 
far into the future right now like you know a, mm-hmm. like a centralized agent but having that and says you know what i don't allow this flight to go it's a no go right and then that whole idea is it sounds crazy right now but you are right now we are all ready to accept the autonomous driver mm-hmm. and we are not ready to accept because we have just seen that it's just proven right it's it's any technology that has been proven right so it, it's just a part, part of it and shall we see leave everything okay if i sell you a ticket for 1500 bucks and the 3500 bucks with the human value you may be able to choose a 3500 ticket right i don't trust right yeah. 99% of the world can't choose a yeah. 3500 they'll be like we'll just go on that's why indigo works yeah. right they provide the most basic service yeah. and they still make money yeah. right so in a country like india or in like any country even us there are not everyone's earning a lot it's like yeah we'll just take a 50 dollar flight like southwest airlines will be the first company to say you know what They're just people, and yeah, you may have like you know a one pilot. So, but how economical is technology going to be going forward? Like when I mentioned that you know jobs will be taken over or not, I am thinking from the aspect of see, I understand that economies of scale will come in at one point of time, and even before they do, maybe one AI machine will uh do a job. as against 10 or 20 humans yeah. working right so i'm not comparing cost that way but i'm comparing cost with respect to uh, the employer's feasibility and them you know stashing out money with respect to working with or leveraging ai over there got it so it's let's look at two parts first yes companies will take over another point is what happens technology is already got super cheap right like ai yeah. models like you can just so not every organization will be able to build their own ai model mm. let's be honest about that until and like maybe their chips get dirty right mm. and i don't see that happening very soon but sooner or later it will happen right mm. so i don't think everyone is going to train and build their whole models right mm. what they're going to use is there is going to be the googles and microsoft of the world but just going to build a specialized model right okay. let's look at our pilot example they are going to partner up with the google or microsoft to build their every airline will pay them a fixed fee mm. and all of them will just build the same pilot model because airplanes are not changing it's like those six seven models that are running right i think let's do another example I, i think you should start using the analogy of uh, bloomberg gpt that will yeah. make resonate with my listeners more okay so let's look at bloomberg gpt right now if for the people who don't know bloomberg gpt is this amazing so if everyone knows bloomberg terminal this is like a 20000 dollar system that bloomberg rents to people that you can't buy it. you rent it every year or like a monthly subscription which has all the information of that yeah. and probably like a lot of people in wall street love this like you know i want a bloomberg terminal i got a bloomberg terminal you know, that's a point it's more or less all the information that you can see on a screen right so the best traders of the world analyze all this information and take the bets that they do right and they try to just make a net positive on the yearly basis or a monthly basis Now, if you look at what a person is analyzing, like like Charlie, you, you analyze stocks, right? You go through the company, you go through the news articles, you go through the financial reports. You maybe see like you know the history of the stock and like like five to seven factors, right? Let's say as the best analyst, analyst, you look at twelve different factors, right? Yeah. And you go deep into twelve those different factors. Bloomberg GPT is literally just using the whole GPT model trained on a financial data set to predict. And this is not the first time it's happened, right? We already know. Um, the man who knew it, who is that guy like george the 66 person guy i think i'm forgetting the name like we read that book right ha 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 simmons yeah okay simmons yeah so simmons. this guy is getting a 66 person return on his capital every year right using what if you look at he has been training his computer since last 40 years they have stock data going back to 1800 still the last point it was visible right they have already built what we call right now an auto gpt or a global gpt and that is proven technology they okay guys so for anyone who doesn't know okay they, this guy has been making 66% annual return it's much more than warren buffett and everyone but this person hires none of the people from a wall street he only hires if you have a scientist degree like a math or a science or astrology degree from the best schools of the world and so imagine the best fa- mathematical minds or scientific minds are making the analyst bets based on data completely mm-hmm. data they don't talk to i don't think that you know they will call someone and ask right yeah. they were doing that they failed on that they were like we're just going to ask our model to do that right mm-hmm. and let's look at aladdin for blackrock right mm-hmm. it has now come out like because they have been taking those bets aladdin is a gpt model for people who don't know or like a now gpt aladdin is an ai again like let's not like no bring it all down to gpt aladdin is an ai model that blackrock uses to predict their future bets 
to predict where the money allocation is going, right? And obviously, there will be someone who takes the final call, right? Because you need someone to fire if it goes wrong, right? But Aladdin takes like you the ninety percent of the calls. This is great opportunity. This is not. It analyzes everything, right? And Charvi, let's look at what you were saying. Like, you know, look at that analog. Financial analysts or like people who are not adding that X factor mm. right, will be written off, right? Because you are looking at twelve, thirteen factors, right? The machine can look at two hundred factors on two hundred shops in a minute, mm. right? And then it predicts. And the best part now, you'll say, no, there's like you know something that keeps happening on a daily basis. We literally have that can just put into that data. Right, you use it like it will read every freaking news goddamn article, right? Mm. And it's not far away where you know you are having just AI goes. I want these questions answered by this particular executive in this particular company to make my predictions better. Mm. You will have robots giving you tasks, right? So a financial analyst, what they do, okay? Unless they are doing insider trading, and that is also now easily like an AI if they get the same knowledge, right? Mm. Until is that information, that specific key part, I'll say, like you know, which is unethical, right? Mm. That's the only part that's left. Because if someone is trading on the public knowledge available, mm. your asymmetric knowledge that these funds today, the best of the funds have, gets reduced to just bits which anyone can access. It's all there. And if you go to YouTube, there are a lot of traders who have built their own mechanisms on YouTube, and they have taught mm-hmm. people how, and they are just processing all the information that they would do. For now, two hundred, three hundred stocks. Correct. Right. So all the people, okay, and if anyone is going into options trading or that, don't mm-hmm. please don't. Like it's a, it's a crazy mark because now this is going to be sophisticated models who will do that at a millisecond rate. They are already are doing. They just get better and better. Now the point is when we say like you know what changes with an AI, right? Like, like just to take that part, it can generate what can happen, right? Like generative, like that that generative AI exists. Like it's a if else condition that process did, okay. But for the first time, it can learn by itself and say, "Wait, I don't want to take this decision, or I want to take this decision because of these factors that I have predicted based on the past data that I think, and I can put that." So, if someone buys like a solar mine somewhere, like you know, for like the silver part, it can just simply the next bet it will take will be probably in a solar company. If someone buys silver. Right, mm. and just imagine those connections. A uh, a great trader would still be able to take, mm. but a machine takes that in a day. A trader will take a week mm. because just of the asymmetric processing on information that there is. So if you look at that, that's that's where the scary part is, right, Charlie? Like then, what do the smartest, brightest people from Harvard come out and do in the two hundred, three hundred k dollar jobs, right? Mm-hmm. So, right. So, I mean, coming back to the original question, what are your thoughts on the economic feasibility of the AI that's coming up? So I think already, like if you look at like you know, every startup already are flush with money, so they have already started using it. Yeah, but I'm the working. Is going on, so I'm the funding window is going on at a time when AI is picking up. And if you look at okay, so the funding winter is going on for the traditional startups because again it's just the recession cycle at present. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. What? How are these people going to raise the next level of funds by telling that they're going to use AI to cut down jobs, right? And given that this is happening during a funding winter, yeah. the problem is people are going to get fired. It's already happened, right? Because yeah. okay, not every company wants to accept this. You see, the maximum layoff started happening in December, January, right? Yeah. All the good founders understood, bhai. Right? Yes, it will work. Or some of them had to do it through their economical reasons. But if you look at everything, funding is going to be easier to raise because now I'm going to say, you know what? I need less money to build the same product and make more money on that, right? Or now I need money to build an AI model that then I you can just take that as an IP. If I don't deliver a product, you can take this as an IP, yeah, right? right? So investors are going to have a tangible product and an intangible product, both of them ready. Yeah. And look at like okay, so Charlie, what is the biggest expense when you start a startup? It's the employees, right? The employees and like that's the biggest problem. Like a founder is restricted to himself till the point he is able to delegate, right? Mm-hmm. That founder is 10x today. A smart founder mm-hmm. is 10x of what it is today. Unless you are and I'm, again, again, let me be very specific. I'm only talking about this in the context when you are having so- software startups, right? Like a Swiggy, the operational head still needs to be there to run the stores. Mm-hmm. Okay, right. but the engineering team can be cut in a good amount of time. Right, it can be cut by whatever percentage, right? And who gets paid the most today? Who gets paid the most? The engineers, right? You have people graduating from college getting thirty, forty L offers, right? Mm-hmm. Who has no experience? They have written probably like three hackathon level codes, right? Yeah. That same code can be written by a 
in like a chat gpt in like a seconds right and like the idea is right so tell me like if you, and let's look let's look at this okay i don't know if you want to go deep into this but if you look at jobs which jobs are going to go away do you want to go about like or you have questions before that so, if i have answered no so yeah. this is what i was discussing also with a friend so we would exactly that you know these harvard graduates that come out i don't understand that people like see i am nowhere near a harvard graduate i have not had a degree from such a prestigious you're probably better but <laughs> oh superb but the point being that i think that jobs which are highly skilled are more at risk compared to jobs that do not have a, a very high uh, a, a skill required for instance when i was discussing this with a friend i was just, we were just discussing that is it better to become a vegetable vendor today because dude people are going to buy vegetables at the end of the day but there there is a high chance as you mentioned that quant or tech or ai will take over the task of being a fund manager today yeah. so which jobs are at risk which aren't how should so, you you know decide how to upskill yourself and how much to upskill yourself so okay so let's let's if we go get into that part so it's a fund manager will not do it let me be very clear like you know not till the next 30 years a fund manager will still need to be there and that because it's accountability you can't fire a ai right mm. you can't if if some uh, like you know mishandling of funds have you can't okay mm. so one job like if i say for everyone accountability based jobs are mm. going to be there that's why i say like you know doctors may be using technology a lot may get replaced by this lower status society mm. but if like you know if it's someone is going to operate on the prime minister it's going to be a doctor Hmm. Let me be like you know, as clear on that as hmm. so every job that has a lot of accountability, you hmm. will have people in those positions, right? Hmm. Because uh, until maybe I don't know until like maybe a hundred fifty years, sixty years, probably faster than that. But you will have until you have an accountability in your job, you're accountable for something. You will have a job. Now let's look at the part where you are. Where we'll go into the the reality of things, right? Hmm. What jobs get automated? Now I'll be honest. It's like the quantum of jobs is going to reduce. Okay. software engineering as a job is going to be there sorry okay? software engineering as a okay. job is going to be there hmm. it's not going to go away the that hmm. job is going to be there hmm. what is going to go away is the big packages that come up with it and the mediocre skill sets also because just you are from a good college will get hired at a high package is going to go away right okay i'll i'll give you an anecdote for that okay so this there is this put a founder on twitter who said companies my vcs were paying me 10x of my valuation so that i can hire people from google microsoft and facebook they have asked me to cut their heads down and reduce my valuation and my money funding by less because i can just use an ai to do that now what world we are living in right so if you were from an iit you were you were getting paid a 40 50 lakhs from a computer science class right mm. just because just because of the brand name let's be very clear they have good hard work yes good work manager but just for the name right it's not i am pretty sure a tier 3 college guy who would have had the same skills and won't get paid that much any day right just because the competition is not there so what happens your skill sets need to be you need to bring a lot to the table let's be very clear on that okay and i i love the like you know the fact that we have this whole idea of generalist coming up right because a software engineer if he's just going to write code maybe the most beautiful code the world will look at right you will not get paid a lot Mm. that's the question nobody is saying that the jobs are going to get replaced. like charu see if you're the best of the best if you're the best podcast creator in the top 10 person and like you know we and the analysis is if you have more than 21 episodes you're already in the top 2% of the episodes mm. that are being produced on a regular basis that means you're already there mm. right you are not ava- apart from that like so you need to be in the top 10% and when i say top 10% you need to be highly skilled and you need to bring a lot to the table now for every field that will differ okay mm. let's be very clear. for every field that will differ but if you are just bringing one expertise knowledge when you are starting out let me be like you know just when you are starting out as a fresher i am saying i write the best code that there is sorry man a code a uh, will have an ai do it problem is there problem is like you know we thought expertise is great like for me i i am not an expert in any field i'm i'm a generalist who just can hash things together and solve a problem right mm. i get paid to solve problems right you get paid to solve a certain kind of problem right you are a generalist like the people that i like we both know we are generalists you can do a lot of things and we just do generalist part of it right the point is now the expertise part that you required you know after your product becomes too big you need 100 people to manage it well sorry you need 10 people to manage it you can just use an ai or you are using an ai maybe you want to run a 5 crore business you can just use ai to do that today to be to be make you the expert in that right if you go to craftful it's a plugin on chat gpt 
it is it literally says we are the best product manager you can have product development coach they don't want to see product manager you just ask it what kind of app you want to create it will list down everything mm. so the pms that are going to get paid mm. 80 lakh 90 lakh a 10 year guy getting paid 1.2 1.3 crores to coordinate and like i know it's, i don't know if this uh, comment section is going to go crazy I'm like you don't know what a product manager does right mm. like, let me be very clear we know what they do okay mm. like world is not stupid right like you know they know what everyone does i'm not saying they are not adding value mm. the best product manager is well but what is the best product manager they have read maybe 20 books they have launched maybe good two products they have shipped them and they have got feedback on that and they know how to do it better your freaking machine was gone through 100 books 100 products needs the right prompt and can have a fine tuned data set on product managers right and the whole coordination part and everything then the point is you will have product managers right and people used to say you know don't be a project manager be a product manager because mm-hmm. you know you are not running you are the idea person right guys literally every product manager is taking bets on the features that are going to be built right you are taking a bet this feature works and we get like you know a growth product manager a technical and this etc like what happens you have one product manager who is actually the owner of that product uses 10 ais to run the whole thing okay you know these are the best features whatever pestel analysis this xyz 100 different things and figure out the best feature so the best jobs are going to get reduced to a lower compensation yes and also if you want the higher compensation a lot of people would want right you won't want our salaries to go down you bring a lot more you you should be a product manager who understands code like the back of your hand right how many b school graduates are there who are doing that who are getting paid that money right there are so many people who will graduate from iim ahmedabad will go into consultancy and like let's not get into consultants but a product manager and everything yeah. and then you bring in the money and you like wait you don't get code like, yeah i'm not supposed to like that's the entitlement <laughs> mm. so with respect to the skill set and you know have, being a generalist and stuff like that have we gone have we done an uno reverse on our old uh, uh, ideology that a jack of all trades master of none i think that no longer exists today then so the complete quote is not that <laughs> the complete quote is that uh, like you know it's 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 a complete like it's a, i'm paraphrasing it's like it's better than being none right like you know that a jack of all, all trades is much better and i'll send you the, i'll probably we can put it in the hmm. comment what the quote is okay. it's a better quote like ja- being a jack of all trades is better okay and that's what the first input that starts on the range that's mm-hmm. a book by david epstein on generalist okay. it says it's better okay we we have just been told the first part because you know it mm. it served the purpose of the industries you need experts on cyber security and everything right and now they will also you know you need to bring a lot for that yeah. yeah right and no charity to so the point is we are not going reverse you know on that we are just saying that a lot of people who are starting out as jobs will need to have a reverse we know for them you can't just be a great coder you can't just be a great coder you can't just great be a product manager you need to bring more that's what my point is so for you i'll i'll tell you you will have your best cardiologist you will have the best security guy in the world who will get paid millions okay but the point is what is the proportion of that very small percent yeah. one top one percent i'm talking about the top one two percent highly skilled people right mm-hmm. like that means when the president goes down you call that guy yeah right? or when your whole india's networks go down you call that guy yeah. right those people are still going to be there uh, up till like whatever like the next 50, easily like they are going to have their good lives and 50 60 years until if you are that level of skill you don't need to worry about ai literally like you just enjoy your life have fun but maximum of us are not hmm. right so when upskilling comes in you need to be a swiss knife okay like you know <laughs> you need to be a literally a swiss knife you need to have six to seven tools that you are really good at hmm. and if you are not good at i am only saying don't expect great salaries don't expect companies to pay you a lot if you don't have six seven skill sets because the point is they can just get that done by an ai right like the point is so you need to bring that and how do you do that again that will be a very detailed thing yeah, yeah. but it's it still comes down to very three basic things learn every day and i'm telling you guys when i say learn every day please learn it i don't know whatever you are doing learn every day mm. second understand how you work right like people don't know how they work people don't know what their working style is and everything right and third be scared like shit that every every day your job can be automated and then list down the things that can be automated and actually automate them free up your time Mm. like the problem is people again charm me it's probably going to be a much better life for the top 5 6% people of the world in the next 10 years and a very bad life for a lot of other people and I, again it sounds scary it is going to be you probably will have a day when a carpenter is getting paid 2 lakhs a month right for doing their job or like you know they charge the us service fees for going and repairing your chair okay 
that may happen. The only thing how, and the point is, but what happens in India, right? Everyone sees the carpenters getting paid a lot. Everyone will become a carpenter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Herd so mentality the, does not take too, 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 too long in India. Yeah. yeah. So you need to be the best of the best. And to be that upskill every day, like that's the only advice I have. And please don't, I don't know, People are still like, you know, I, I, you I don't know. You need to upskill your social media handles here where you put in. Uh, yeah, yeah. That will be. I, so I, I, in one AI platform, knowledge about one AI platform every day on his Insta. Uh, yeah. So that's where yeah. I get to learn a lot about AI personally. And that is when I had a discussion with him and we decided that, you know, let's discuss it on a podcast rather than just doing it over a call. Yeah. So, so yeah. The only thing is, I'm pretty sure, Tanya, a lot of people in the comment section will be saying like, you know, no, it's not, you don't know what a product manager does, you don't know what a software engineer does. Mm-hmm. Guys, again, you can, like, you know, you can keep debating that or you can, like, you know, do a better thing. Go learn. Go learn about AI. Learn how you can, I literally do that introspection every two weeks now because there's just so much every day I don't have the time to go out and see, okay, what's going on. Every two weeks I sit down and Saturday, Sunday, and I just take some four hours and see what parts of my job can be automated and how can I automate them. Right. And I go back to like, you know, and I just do that. Like just automate that because I don't like, I have stopped writing any customer support shitty emails. Like whenever I had to like, you know, reply to a, like, you know, raise someone a voice, I just go to chat. If write this, I have ordered this, this is the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Two minutes, send the email, you get a perfect response. Yeah. Right. So automate your life to a level that your time is freed up to learn things because it is going to be a big difficult. And like, again, Sammy, we can go into the economics of this if you want to, but like, yeah. Hmm. Akshat, so everything said and done, I understand what you uh, uh, are heading, where you are heading towards. But having said that, how would you define the, or how would you put the fact that it consumes a lot of energy, right? Be it electricity, be it water. Uh, so we've all read about AI's environmental impact, right? The carbon emissions and stuff like that. So I was reading this article and it said that GPT-3 in 2022, I think, uh, uh, the carbon emissions by GPT-3 stood at about 502 trillions uh, tons, 502 tons. Plus, these also consume huge amounts of water as well, right? So the same article also mentioned that the uh, rough conversation with chat GPT of about 30 to 40 questions would uh, imply that it consumes about 500 ml of water, which is huge. And right now, we yeah. understand that global warming is impacting all of us. There are heat waves across the country. I mean, of course, El Nino is to play a part of it, but that's temporary. We cannot deny the fact that we are ruining the environment. And this was the same concern that also came up uh, when people were behind crypto. The mining yeah. of crypto would also, imp- how how it would impact the environment. So what, what's, what's your take on that? How, how are we defining that? So, tell me, yeah, like, again, I think, like, we are, you know, we are trying to, again, yes, there is a huge environmental impact to all these things, but instead of, like, trying to blame the consumer, like, you won't blame a third world, like, you know, country who's like, consuming a lot of electricity to grow themselves, right? Because, like, you know, again, they, they, they are consuming electricity. Yeah. One part of the conversation is we should look at, like, you know, enabling maybe, like, you know, what amount of charge GPT or, like, AI-based tools should have, like, a carbon emission tax, right? And that we utilize to build cleaner yeah. sources of energy. That's one solution that we can obviously look at. But yeah. more than that, we can, it's a good debate to have. Yes, that, you know, yeah. we should try to make. But if you see technology will progress to become more efficient, right? Like, the yeah. GPUs that we're using now are not going to be the same GPUs that we used 10 years down the line, right? Yeah. NVIDIA is, is already making, like, a huge strides in that, right? So, slowly, all these factors combined will make AI more environmental friendly right and also more like i think like you know that will also add to more maybe like you know because if we have cheaper sources of energy right if the bill goes down for open ai or other companies like that right they will also be passing on that so you will have higher adoption right so there's like a huge part environmental part is there and i completely agree that we should focus but we should focus on getting better cleaner energy right we should have a cleaner sources of energy in like wind mills or solar energy all those are there like what if we could just have every building today installed with solar energy or every yeah. like you know corporate headquarters should be like i think government or every one else should be focusing towards that like you know have more cleaner sources of energy rather than like you know trying to blame the consumer of that particular energy so it will get the whole bundle thing i i'm very positive about it five ten years and like you know let's take the crypto example for just a second what happened in the last two years in Ethereum, right? They literally reduced the energy consumption of the world by 0.2%, right? Now, of the okay. world, like, amount by just... So, what they did, they put in a code, like, in a simple, in simpler terms, they just updated their code base to use less electricity, right? It's a whole, like, yeah. you know, we can go into which algorithm they okay. were just 
Okay. But they just updated the code base across the world to use less electricity. And the electricity consumption went down. Like literally there's a spike graph and maybe you can put that. And okay. then this goes down. So, and that took like around easy six, seven years to happen. Like, you know, when people started thinking about it. So it's not going to happen today. It's not going to happen. Like, I don't think in the yeah. recent year, because again, it needs to reach to scale right now. Okay. How many people watching this have actually used chat GPT on a daily basis, right? If you have yeah. that question, that that's a very few small percentage. So yeah. So yeah, I think we should care, but I won't want to blame AI only for like, you know, like increasing yeah. because probably it's probably going to be an AI that actually solves the energy crisis compared to humans because we have been trying to do that and haven't been able to do it. Right? That's, a, that's a very strong opinion, I'd say. Could be, right? Like, yeah. again, so the point is like, because, okay, and then you look at it, this comes down to this, right? Uh, what you give a machine a goal, like that's where we reach to, like, you know, could be like a very difficult Terminator series level. But the idea is if you give a machine a goal, it will probably give you great understanding of all the data points that need to be covered, right? Yeah. Because if you go to a business case study competition, how do we solve the climate crisis? We'll have the same three chances yeah. to put up and together. Yeah. But having a much more bigger analysis, it may be able to provide us, you know, better options. Like what Sam Altman said, right? They had no idea how to monetize open AI. They literally yeah. said that, you know, once we build this generative artificial intelligence kind of a thing, mm -hmm. we'll probably ask it how to make money. Right? Mm -hmm. And people laugh then. People are not laughing now. So again, I think like, yeah. you know, it's like a huge... Yeah. There, there's a thing that we can ask. So let's see. I, I, I think we'll... There probably because... And also, you know, like, if you just add to point, like the... You have a lot of people in the top 2-3% who are consuming a lot of electricity, right? That yeah. person yeah. will get reduced a lot, yeah. right? Like if yeah. you are, and like that person gets reduced a lot, I think uh, sad as it is, but it, it will change, you know, the amount of electricity that you so, yeah. No, I think this has been one heavy episode and I yeah. think we can have a part two of it, keeping in mind the attention time frame that people have today. Uh, yeah. But thanks, thanks, Akshat, for doing this. I think it's a well-rounded up conversation. I'll just end it uh, with my rapid fire round. So five okay. words. Let's go. Okay. Uh, I'll start with uh, chat GPT versus BARD. Chat GPT. So, uh, betting on a software engineer or a doctor? Neither, honestly. Like, like, you know, just like, like, be a biotech guy. Be a person who can, who knows about anatomy. And like, I'll be honest. Just be a biotech person. India in the next 10 years with respect to AI? 110% better. It's already like, you know, we'll, we'll probably surpass... Uh, I don't know from a model perspective, we'll probably surpass the use cases, will be highly in India and you'll, you're going to see a lot of people who will get super happy with AI and also super rich. So yeah, it's, it's actually exciting place. And, as, and even people who aren't going to be in jobs, like let's not discount that. So, yeah. Okay. Neuralink. Honestly, like super excited about it. Super excited. So, yeah. okay. And the last one being Akshat. Yeah, a person who love stack i've been telling these people like i'll probably take a more word like you know love stack that's one if you are just a rapid fire i've been telling like you know I, everyone used to ask me to improve my handwriting right it still mm -hmm. sucks yeah. Right? Yeah. and i was telling my teachers don't worry it's not going to happen mm -hmm. well i've been really wrong and like i and i'm just going to say that because I, there's just so much to do right there's just so mm -hmm. much to do. so uh, and charlie i'd like to say from one closing perspective like you know for everyone who's watching guys the basics don't go away the hard work the productivity better making your productivity don't go away so don't think that you know i'll just get everything to get done by and be a lazy person don't just just yeah got it got it sure akshar thanks thanks for coming awesome, on board and yep. hopefully yeah. we'll have to do a like let's do a like next one should be a two three yeah, i think the second one should be more of a screen sharing kind of a structure i, yeah. I really want my users to you know listeners to go through like say for example we do a casting of mid journey or you know prompting setting up prompts on chat gpt and the likes of it that would Pretty be sure. more engaging yeah <laughs>